My friends, this is a time for greatness in planning for Canada's future. Unity demands it. Freedom requires it. Vision will ensure it. My purpose and my aim will be to lay the foundations of this nation for a great and a glorious future. Well, in the old days, one of the great speeches in the House of Commons was delivered in 1910 or 11 by La Fortune, a Montreal member. In those days, there was no restriction on the time. At the end of 14 hours and 10 minutes, he said, I, I now have laid the basis for the argument I intend to advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, um, if I can question that statement just for a moment, I wasn't attempting to build up a defense. I was attempting to outline all of the alternatives. You were certainly doing a marvelous job to preserve and help the government. Every other person last night on CBC was objective, but you Conjured up. Sir, you are making this statement outside the chamber. Do you make it on your... I am making it here. Have you got anything to say about it? Yes, sir. I deny utterly that I attempted to defend this government. Just another example of what you've done so frequently. So, Sir John said, you know... I'm one of those who believes in prayer, excepting when the prayers are, are uttered by the grits. Because he said, if their prayers were answered, not only would I be sick, but long since would have joined my ancestors in another place altogether removed. Was this man a liberal, did you say, or a conservative? The oh, talk for 14 been, hours. Uh, liberal. It takes them longer to explain. <laughs> <laughs>
unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Last Sunday morning at the hour of 11, he sat in his accustomed pew, sharing with the congregation of that church in the worship of God. summer I taught school. However, in, in the month of September that year, the school inspector made a surprise visit to the late Dr. McGee. And uh, we'd been bothered with gophers in the yard, and I was out shooting gophers. And gopher shooting wasn't on the curriculum that year, and that was the last time I had a license to teach school. All of my defeats were fortunate for me in the light of subsequent events. I never lost any hope that ultimately I was going where I intended to go from the time I was nine years of age. colonel who wanted a certain job. Sir John came out of his office. There was the colonel. Sir John said, I'm so glad to see you. The three of us have been discussing a problem in engineering, military engineering. I ask you for your solution. How much gunpowder would one have to put under a bull's tail in order to blow his horns off? <laughs> <laughs> opportunities to meet the people when you go by train than anywhere else. Abraham Lincoln said, God must have liked the common people. He made so many of them. Some said, I was too much concerned with the average Canadian. My answer was, I can't help that. I'm one of them. People feel when you meet them in this way, 
that they are part and parcel of your thinking. And they, they feel that they have been personally recognized as they have been by the fact that you have chosen to visit with them. Their problems, your problems. Their heartbreaks, your heartbreaks. I like people. You know, you were born too soon. You'd be, you'd be a marvelous football player today. Yeah. And that page. That time of the year, 1940, you see. Oh, yeah, that's too early. Yeah, that's because, too far gone. That's right. <laughs> I've lived a long life. Most prime ministers pass away before they're evaluated. I am in a different category in that regard. Well, the first 80 years, and here he is, the great honorable John G. Deacon. changing any at all. Oh, now that makes me feel good. <laughs> Thanks very much, Frank. How's business? Oh, uh, a little bit slow after uh, Christmas yeah. and New Year's, you know. Yeah. What year did you start in Prince Albert as a barber? Uh, when? What year? Uh, 25. Yes, about the same time as I came. <laughs> it's about 39 years ago. Yeah, well, <laughs> Frank, can well you I'm you? glad to see you, Mr. Well, all the best, Frank. Well, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I determined that there should be no second-class Canadians to those often nameless and voiceless of the poor, the aged, the needy, and the afflicted, the farmer, the laborer, the fisherman. I did not set out to be unjust to the powerful and look after themselves. I should tell you of a simple experience that is reported of me in 1940, when in the dying days of a campaign in a small town in Saskatchewan, it was suggested that I should call on Mrs. X and she might support me. I did, she said she would, and as I was leaving, I turned to her and said, and I hope your husband will support me too. And she said, support you. He hasn't supported me for the last seven years. was captured within eight miles of here. That would have been a great defense. A lawyer today wouldn't even have to address the jury even. The verdict would have been not guilty by reason of insanity. And here is living, living history. This is history. This is history.
To your Canada and my Canada, Confederation and the rights of Canadians, whether of the parent races or otherwise, must not be placed on the auction block for political gain. No leader, no man, whatever his dedication, to his country and his party may be, can ever march forward facing the foe if afraid that there's somebody behind him who's going to interfere directly or into it. I will not, if chosen as a leader, offer something for nothing, but I will require of you, my fellow Canadians, today all the energy, the faith, and the vision that the Canadians of yesterday gave to the foundation of Canada. I want to know where I stand. I want to know. I want to know where you stand, too. That's what I want. I have nothing to withdraw in my desire to see Canada one country, one nation, my country and yours. There is one thing that will bind the hearts of Canadians to join with us, because after all, without regard to party, Every man and woman has in her, his or her heart the love of country. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for having given me the opportunity to serve in my day and generation.
Over eight decades, he spanned our history, from the ox cart on these prairies to the satellite in space. Now that light, that sweep of history, has ended. And we are here today to see John Diefenbaker do his final place of rest. <laughs> One love, Canada. One purpose, its greatness. One strength and abiding belief in freedom. One aim, unity from the Atlantic to the Pacific. be a double feature. You can't sing. <laughs> well, this is real good because I was afraid he was going to ask me to sing one of the conservative songs and I don't know any. <laughs> I thought that was the liberal hymn, doodly doo. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> 